Thank you to welcome to the show Pat Collan, who has done various jobs across GA, including Pat six years as hurling development officer in Limerick City. I have it down that you were first appointed there around 2005, maybe as Limerick's first dedicated hurling development officer. I hope I have those dates right. I've read them elsewhere. You're welcome to the show. How are you doing? Great, Joe. How are you doing yourself? Good. I mean, I mean, I look, I'm not from a, a, a county dominating the hurling landscape, but I'm doing OK. I presume you're all very happy down there. Yeah, when you say down there, I'm actually in West Cork and I'm, I have full view of Carberry <laughs> Rangers pitch. There's 30 um, ladies out. Uh, training there in the sunshine at the moment so there's a, a little bit of irony there but uh, <laughs> yeah all, all's good in Limerick I believe as well yeah so Pat I saw you quoted yesterday Dermot Crow had a great piece in the uh, Sunday Independent we yeah. just thought it would be an interesting angle to expand for people because what's happening here in Limerick is maybe a template or I don't know if it is but a template for other counties to emulate so I mentioned that I have you down as first being appointed in 2005 as Limerick City's first dedicated hurling development officer. And then yeah. there's the the lifting the treaty blueprint, which kind of launched in 2008. And this seems to have done incredible work. You might just give us a sense of where Limerick was, Limerick City in particular, when it came to hurling maybe 15 years ago and where it got to very, very quickly, it seems as well. Mm. Yeah, so... Limerick was in a not a great place in 2005 when it came to hurling. Um, I mean, economically, we, it was during the Celtic Tiger. Munster rugby was was flying it. Uh, Limerick had lost, you know, an All Ireland's in '94 and '96, both kind of dramatically enough. And I suppose hurling in in across the city and maybe the county was um, in 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 at, at a low ebb. I, I suppose in terms of. Uh, in terms of how people view the games, but also um, in terms of participation. Like a quick example is in the Limerick City uh, division, which caps, encapsulates the city centre and the suburbs. There was 15 clubs, about 10,000 children in primary school, and about 1,500 were playing hurling regularly at that point. So, um, yeah, and as I said, we, we, we grew things from there. So I read that very quickly you got to a point and... Uh these stats maybe just kind of ballpark but if uh, participation if, if to take up that point was it about maybe eight percent amongst primary school children so across Limerick City all those primary school children thousands and thousands just eight percent are playing hurling and then by 2011 you get that up to 57 percent of primary school children playing Gaelic games how do you do that um there's no quick answer um I suppose just to clarify those stats, that would have been children that played, um, children that played regularly who'd be about, you know, over six or more weeks of the year were about at about 15% and we got it to about 30% of regular participation. Um, but the first place you have to look is at yourself and as, at a county. I suppose when I started the job, I spent the first nearly year traveling around to clubs, listening to them. I suppose asking the, the right kind of questions as well. You know, why... Why do you not think Limerick hurling is where it should be? Why isn't it developing in the way that it is? And I, it was very clear to see that, you know, hurling, I think it's probably the ultimate extension of Limerick culture, but that pe people pe people were, were kind of fed up of losing all Ireland's and we weren't doing very well at, at, at uh, you know, in the Munster Club Championship at, or um, in, the, in, the, in the all Ireland Club Championship. And, you know, I just think, I just think that you could easily blame rugby, you could blame soccer, you could blame all these other things, but... I suppose the, the 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 first place to look at is at is at yourself. So, trying to bring people around through different ways through coach education, through literally calling to people's houses. I used to call into Kyle Hayes's house and with his mom and dad and, and chat to them, for example, regularly. Um, and just trying to bring people around to saying, look, things are not great, but look, I mean, we we can we can develop this and we can develop it quickly, and we can develop it together. There's a couple of major factors, really. The first was administration lifting, lifting the treaty was like a strategic vision, a ten-year strategic vision. Uh, people use the word blue play, blue, blue, blueprint and template, and, and and we didn't copy anybody else's, you know. And I, I sincerely advise any county as well not to copy lifting the treaty, um, because every county has its unique needs. I mean, Limerick City is a you know a unique blend of rugby, soccer, um, and and and, uh, and and Gaelic games. But like you've you've also UL arena swimming golf like there's, there's a limerick's a very proud city and uh, and county sporting city and county but um the first thing was really administration you know uh, the, the four divisional boards 
Uh, underage were dissolved, uh, Limerick City, South, East and West. Uh, the same teams, like I grew up playing the same three, three teams in East Limerick, in a hand in County Limerick. So they were dissolved and it allowed for more teams to play across each, across the county as the road network improved. Um, obviously a games program, a good games program. So you had a strategy, a strategic vision, proper administration, uh, a proper games program, proper coaching through, you know, coach education, professional coaching services and just I suppose it, it was it was easy. It's much easier to do that in a county like Limerick, where there's a very strong tradition and there's a there's a huge passion for the game of hurling. I mean, I've travelled throughout Ireland. I, I was very involved in Cavan hurling for a few years, and it's it's a different uh, it's a different challenge altogether because they, they don't really have the tradition there um, across the county. So, you know, but uh, fundamentally for me, and look, there's many many other factors, but fundamentally for me, the biggest um, change in in Limerick over the last kind of 15 years or in that kind of five or six year period that you mentioned was that was the change in 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 internally in our culture in our Gaelic games culture uh one from kind of going from a fixed mindset kind of focused on the problem where we kind of you know kind of transitioned slowly uh, over to kind of more of a growth mindset kind of looking at solutions and and things like you know um secondary schools and Castle Troy College and Art School Reach and, and all that kind of stuff well then tell us about the schools so because I was reading our school Reach as an example became one of the foremost hurling nurseries in the country they won five hearty cups in nine years between 2010 yeah. and 2018 and then Castle Troy came up because we were just uh, looking at Groach Hegarty and thinking well he's made for rugby now I know his father obviously has a pedigree to say the least when it comes to hurling but he went <laughs> to Castle Troy and Castle Troy would have been a renowned rugby school and yet that yeah. was where Groach Hegarty and many others like him you know, played hurling and um, uh, won big titles in hurling at Castle Troy. So again, maybe 20, 30 years ago, the lure of rugby might have been that bit stronger. So do you just go into schools, Pat, and say, listen, we want to get hurling going. Will you help us? Or do you provide the coaching? Or like, what's the nitty gritty of suddenly getting schools to be a big part of hurling in Limerick? How does that happen? Well, you need to win over people um, in a sincere way. You know, and, people, and, and I heard the word values being thrown around a lot. Um, yesterday, Keen Lynch, I think, you know, on and off the, the pitch, the, the post-match interview really kind of encapsulated everything that's good about Limerick and, 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 and values. But I remember walking into Artscull Reach, I met the principal, Bree de Bruyne, in, you know, 2005-2006. And I, by the time I, I, my, my handshake had finished, she had pointed to a dressing room that had been partly funded by the proceeds from Paul O'Connor representing both Ireland and the Lions. And she said, what can you do for us? So I kind of knew straight away that Art School Reach meant business um, and I, I didn't have a blank check. And there's an awful misconception out there and I just want to dispel a bit of a myth as well. In terms of grassroots development, J.P. McManus is a wonderful man, a wonderful philanthropist. He, he contributes fantastically so many ways to live, particularly the Limerick Senior Hurling Team. But like in terms of the clubs and in terms of the grassroots and the kind of work that was going on with the volunteers, there was no blank checks out there and you know you need a certain amount of resources obviously i was there and, and, and there was other some other part-time positions coaching in schools but look fundamentally um it was a get, getting people to sit down and um, talk to each other um and 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 and, and you know b build build trust between people and, and collectively i'll give you two quick examples liam cronin came to the munster council office he met liam um the, the his name is gone now the county board chairman at the time uh, liam lenhan and he, he, he set out a strategic vision for Art School Reach uh, over the next five years. And it, 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 it ended up with uh, about 2,000 euro in buses uh, being, being a bus grant. So because the, the, so, there's so many hurlers in there being, being transported up to the Pearson GA Club. So little things like that. I remember being in the Black Swan and Anacotti um, uh, just over lunch with about uh, five or six parents, including, um, in, 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 including uh Tom and Dan Morrissey's dad um, uh, was sitting at there at the table and I remember asking the question, you know, guys, okay, rugby's strong, that's good. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Um, where where do you think we'll be, I said, in um, in, in five years from now? And, and we were looking at the first years and, and five or six years later when they were finished school and mm. there, was, there was a lack of kind of clarity, but I remember asking, you know, suggesting, what, what about the Hearty Cup? What if we were competing at the Hearty Cup? And people started laughing, you know, and and um, it, it's not about what I did or what I led. I mean, I was only a small cog in, in the overall wheel, but th th there was this kind of surge of positivity and collective self-belief 
um, that that uh, that that kind of stemmed from kind of values like humility and sincerity, etc. Yeah. And and so Pat, just to get into the weeds of it for a second, who's doing the coaching at the schools? Because this is what I don't understand. I know you were the first development officer appointed. How quickly do you get to ten development officers? Twenty? Who's coaching them when they're in Castle Troy? Like I, I'd love to know the answers to those, those kind of specifics. Yeah. You don't, you don't tell me about Castle Troy specifically, but you know what I mean. I, yeah. I, get, I get the vision, but I'm almost interested in the numbers here. Yeah. So it, it, it's a mix. You'll find it really boils down to the principal, particularly in a primary school. Right. Um, it, it, it's a mix. It's a mix. It's really teachers that that drive it. Um, and that even in terms of access, whether whether it's me as a development officer going in, or 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 you know parents contributing to the coaching, um, uh, all the rest of it, it, it certainly was always volunteer led. Unlike maybe other sports, you know, where the coaches are paid to come in externally. Right. Um, but but uh, it, it, it's a complex mix. I mean, if you go to Patrick's Well um, Primary School, for example, Gary Kirby's been in there for the last I don't know how many years, volunteering his time. Excellent, Mike Hurler, um, and and he coaches. You know, the principal. Right. Um, you, you go to Art School Reach. In Art School Reach, it was about four or five teachers, Liam Cohn and Niall, Niall Moore and others that really drove it um, with the help of some 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 parents and so on. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a mix of the club, uh, you know, the, the, the parents, um, mostly people in the community. But it really, it really needs to come from the schools themselves, okay. be it the principal and the teachers. So it, it was almost harnessing that amateur ethos as opposed to people might think, well, JP put his hand in his pocket and, and paid for uh, 25 hurling development officers to run a professional programme. It was it was more harnessing the available yeah. assets. Yeah, the available assets, really. Tradition, you know, I talked about fixed and growth mindset, but like fixed mindset isn't a bad thing. Like there was a huge tradition. I mean, I grew up in a hand listening to stories about Mick Mackey and I had Eamon Cregan and Bernie Hartigan winners in, seven of, in the, the 1973 All-Ireland. The last All-Ireland we won before 2018, you know, 40, whatever years it was, 45 years. So, um, it was it was uh, it was trying to to build on that tradition mm. and and uh, yeah just make people believe again in themselves you know and is the um, academy a crucial part of all this then when you identify the Keen Lynches when he's I don't know what age when it, it became apparent that Keen Lynch was Keen Lynch and you 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 target those guys for extra training is it in the academy yeah yeah that's part of it I mean it all really starts with the, with the club you know and having a good club program and in a healthy club um competitions from maybe under 14 up um i definitely think and my experience with development squads and academies or whatever you want to call them is that you know it's usually the physically stronger player that will make it at under 14 and 15 i mean i, I was one of them i played in the tony forestal in 94 you know seven years later limerick had won three under 21 all irelands i should have been on those panels but only one of the tony forestal under 14 panel that year went on to represent any of those three panels and um, you, you know, it's 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 it, it's for me whether a, a guy is centre back in the Limerick under 16s and they win the Nina Co-op or whatever, and he's a hero at that point. Okay, yeah, he he may come through the system, but um, he may not. You know, and, and it's it's about you know him maybe going back and and, and being a very good club hurler, and making the club championship all, all the more better. But like, I, I, there's certainly um, there's certainly a change in the mindset um, over. I was probably longer than 15 years. It was probably more like 20, 25 years where the culture in Limerick was stemming probably from like the Mackie Greyhounds years and years ago where it was, it was man first and ball second. Mm. And, you know, we, we, had to, we had to change that. And obviously that was kind of inspired by Newtown Chandram, Newtown Chandram and the passing game, et cetera. But, uh, but you, can see, you can see the skill set um, of, of the, the, the technical skills of the guys yesterday on display as well as their physicality. I mean, it was... Awesome, you know. Yeah, no, it was a joy to behold. And so, Pat, is this now a fairly well-oiled machine in Limerick? I mean, the nursery programs at the clubs, which you got going, you've um, clearly got the schools on board. The academy then can develop the better players. Uh, you've you've got buy-in. I presume the success is very alluring and, and makes yeah, some yeah. of the, the conversations to get people involved even easier. Is, is Limerick now kind of set up to keep pumping out great teams? Hopefully. Yeah, well, hopefully it is. Um, I think. Uh, I think the uh, upward trajectory was the, the 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 term used by the Limerick manager yesterday, and I, I believe that. And I think it's wonderful when you win, and I certainly would would have been happy with uh, just seeing Limerick win one All Ireland in my lifetime. Um, but you know the fact that they've won three, it's wonderful. I remember having a cup of tea with um, Gerard Hegarty's dad, Ger Hegarty. Mm. He used to be in the bank in, in, in Limerick City, and you call in for a cup of coffee. And I remember asking him distinctly, like I said, Ger. You know, when Limerick were going well in the mid-90s, they won three Munster championships and they, you know, got to all Ireland finals. 
you know, what was it like and, and why didn't that follow through? And he said there was loads of Hurleys bought. We were feeling teams in inner city clubs for a while, but it just died off, you know, uh, thereafter. So, right. so, 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 yeah, is Limerick a well-oiled machine? But, like, I mean, it has to go for its NCT every year. And it, <laughs> you, you, you cannot take your eye off the ball. Excuse the pun, the name of the show, but uh, you cannot take your eye off the ball for, for one second, be it uh, JP McManus and the financial support, support he gives to the elite um, you know, less than it's like one percent of one percent who represent the county, um, um, and 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 that's all that's all fine. But you cannot it go. It really starts at six and seven years of age, providing a, a games program yeah. and just allowing yeah. lo- allowing children play in the truest sense of play. Yes, and I presumably that doesn't cost a fortune. Like, to what extent is the GAA contributing financially to have that underage stuff all, all working as well as it is? Yeah, significantly. I mean, there's 350 full-time development staff um, around the country. There's any number of, of, of kind of co-funded schemes with municipal bodies and, and, um, and various people, you know. So I think that the, the GEA is, is, I mean, what, what is the GEA? You know, people think it's Crow Park and it's, and it's this and it's that. And it is and it isn't. I mean, it's really, it really comes back to, you know, the county and the division and the club. And so like, what are the club doing? What are the volunteers doing? Are they... You know, are they are they are, are the kids playing? Like, are the are the kids playing? Um, are they playing regularly? And and what's that experience like? You know, what's that experience like? Is there any point in winning a Fela under fourteen if, like my club did, you know, um, um a number of years ago, and, and I don't know how many of them went on and played at adult level, mm. whether 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 it was adult, a senior or or junior, and you know. Just one thing I'd like to, I suppose, clarify from my own perspective is, 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 is the word success, and it's been thrown around an awful lot, you know. But what, like, what is success really like? What is it? Is it, is it Limerick winning on All Ireland yesterday? It is on one level for sure. I mean, I, w- I was there with my dad and, and my brother, and it was one of the greatest days ever, especially in 2018. It was, it was absolutely magical. But is that what it's all about? I don't think so. I think it's about what I'm looking at out the window here in Carby Rangers or in a hand or, or in any part of, 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 of Ireland or overseas. It's about people coming together and having an opportunity to play in a in a relaxed oh it's it's always competitive, you know, whether it's under eight or, or whether it's like senior senior championship. Um, it's always competitive, relevant relevant to the needs of the individuals. Mm. But you know just given given people the opportunity to play um with the right facilities in the right environment is really what it's all about. That's that's a success. Is the kid going to come back the next year? Um, you know, is he going to come back the next year and play with the club? Like, that's really what the whole thing is about for me. Well, it's worked out. Uh, Pat Cullen, who worked as an early development officer in Limerick City, thanks so much, Pat, for giving us that insight and uh, congrats again. Enjoy the next few days. Thanks, Joe. Take care.